All right, so there is another problem with Wi-Fi. And actually, I might say Wi-Fi and 11 now, but basically with wireless, that there is a hidden node problem. You cannot use the Ethernet method called CSMA-CD. Because in CSMA-CD, what we do is call carrier sense multiple access collision detection. Collision detection, CD, is the part that you cannot do here. Why? We cannot, because we cannot detect collision. So here's the thing. You see, in this scenario, A can listen to B, and B can listen to C, but C cannot listen to A. And so what will happen is if both A and C transmit to B, they cannot detect collision. They cannot detect collision. Sender cannot detect collision. Only receiver can. Right? So in Ethernet, this is how we operate it. Basically, the sender detects the collision and stops. Wi-Fi. Right? We cannot do that here. And so the receiver has to tell the sender that please stop. And therefore, this is called CSMACA, collision avoidance. However, actually, we don't even use collision avoidance. All we do is we just don't speak until the receiver. So there are four packets for each packet that you want to send. So this guy wants to speak to the access point. It says, I am ready to send. Can I please? This one says, clear to send. Yes, you can, because nobody else wants to speak right now. Then it says, okay, here's my data. Then it says, I got it. So four packets are sent for every packet. That needs to be sent. On Ethernet, this will be just one packet. Yeah. That's just one data packet? You can't send, be clear to send, you know, a couple of them? That will come soon. Okay. Yeah, that will come soon. But this is the original one. So basically, there's a four-way handshake here. That for every packet, now I want to send this packet number two. You so do the same thing. You say RTS, CTS, data, and act. Third, RTS, CTS, data, and act. Because it is quite possible that two people want to speak and they will send RTS and they will collide and nobody will send. But at least the data is not lost. RTS is very tiny. Right? So you just last maybe microsecond. But if you will, data could be long and if you collide in the middle of the data, you have to retransmit the whole data. So you know, at least you don't retransmit the whole data. You just send RTS and you get a CTS and you get ACK. Those three other packets are very... All right, so that is what is MAC is. MAC is Media Access Control. And the Media Access Control is CSMA CA, which means that CSMA. So there is still carrier sense. So you don't even send your RTS if you see if you hear somebody else. And so carrier sense, you sense the carrier, you listen to the carrier, and if somebody is speaking, you don't. CSMA is there. But how do you get collision? You avoid the collision by asking the receiver. Right? So listen before you talk. Collision, carrier sense multiple access means listen before you talk. If the medium is busy, then you you back off, you try a random number, and you say, okay, I will try again after such time. If two people collide, they will both try a different random number and start at a different time. So avoid collision by sending a short message, RTS. RTS contains several information. So RTS says, look, I want to talk to B. I want to talk for 10 seconds. Duration, of course, it won't be 10 seconds. And I want to talk for 10 milliseconds, maybe. Duration of the message, and then so everybody listens to it as many people as they can listen, and they will all know that once this guy starts, he's going to be there for ten seconds. Destination sends clear to send, and whoever is the destination, most often it is the base station. Destination says clear to send, and um, and then in that also it repeats the same thing. Every packet actually has the remaining time. It says okay, so in the RTS it will include the time of the RTS, time of the CTS, time of the packet, time of the act. In CTS, it has the time of the CTS and the packet and the act. In the packet, there's a the time of the packet and the act. In the act, it says, I am done. Right, so the time is there in every packet. So because you cannot detect collision, each packet is act and MAC level retransmission if not act. If you don't get the act, start from there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Basically, they will both um, not get the CTS and they will both draw a random number. No, no, there's no CDMA. Collision, okay, CDMA means code division multiplex access. I'm not talking code uh, CDMA here. They will both draw a random number, not like, okay, okay, I see what you, where you're going from. 
In CDMA, I said that you, in frequency hopping, you change the frequency by using a random number generator. Here, we are not changing the frequency right now. We are just saying that we draw a random number to, to decide how long to wait. Okay, this is the same thing that is done in Ethernet too. If you remember Ethernet, if you collide, then you draw a random number and you back off. Anybody remembers that? Right? Exactly the same algorithm is used here. You draw a random number and you back off. Back off means you wait for a time. You don't change your frequency or anything. You just back off in time. Now, we also they also do more than priority. So, what they do is there are three kinds of time you have to back off, uh, time you wait. One is the inter initial inter-frame spacing. So, between one frame and the other frame, there is a space. And so, that could be short, which is SIF. It could be medium, which is called PIF. Or it could be large, which is DIFF. So, some very time critical thing such as RTS, CTS and ACK, these has to be sent right after one SIF. Very small period and you send it right away. Okay, this is first. Data, after data has been sent, the acknowledgement is the highest priority thing. It has to go. After RTS has been sent, CTS is the highest priority thing. Okay, so they start within one SIF of the busy period ending. As soon as the busy period ends, within one SIF of them, we send these. Then there is a, a small period allowed during which there is a pre-reservation PIFs, point coordination function. This simply could be better remembered as periodic coordination function. So, periodic means something that you have to do every second or every millisecond or something, something that repeats. For that, you make a reservation that I want to speak two words every second and you get a reservation for that. And so, that you can do during this time. Yes. You will have a reserved point that as soon as the SIF is over, then after three milliseconds, your time. Then after four milliseconds, your time. So, you will have a reserved spot. And after diffs, everybody else can do, and that is called diffs is the distributed coordination function. And then you basically go back and then try your luck. There is no reservation then. Best effort. Then basically you send your RTS. If it makes it good, if it doesn't make it, back off. So, three kinds of traffic. First is what we would call the control packets, which are RTS, CTS, and ACK. They go in SIFs. Then time critical traffic, we call it PIF, point coordination PCF. They go in the reserved slot. And then DIFFS is the distributed coordination function, which is everybody else. No reservation. Is this clear? So basically, after every packet, this thing takes, takes out, right? Now, so what happens is the access point starts the whole cycle. It sends a beacon. It says, okay, start fast. Some small period of time, there is a PCF access, contention free access. During that time, who has reserved, whoever has reserved can send. And then after that time, contention access. Whoever is not reserved can try. So that is clear, right? So there is a beacon, and the beacon has more than timing. You know, beacon also has the name of the base station. You know, and it might even have that. You know, other things about that. This is Wustel this and Wustel that, and so on. So forth. it is about um, now back off. So there is only one queue in the stations, and therefore whatever is the head of the queue will decide what kind of access you need. You either need periodic access or you need them, um, I mean, like you need time critical and so on, whether you want to send a packet or acknowledgement or control and so on. So forth. And you keep three variables, contention window, back of count, and network allocation vector. It will become clear as to how we use that. So if a RTS, CTS, data, rack, anything is heard, then you take the time from that frame and put that into your nav. 
nav is actually your timer. So you set your timer and this says that I'm going to talk for 10 seconds. You set your timer to 10. Now don't disturb anybody for 10 seconds. Right? Now when the timer goes off, then you can say, let me see, is the medium now available? Now it's quite possible somebody else has grabbed it before you. Right? But then, you know, basically at that time, you listen for the next timer value and say, okay, this guy is here for 11 seconds. I'm going to set my timer to 11. So nav is basically a timer. Okay. Now back off and condensation window is basically, you know, how many times you have backed off. If you backed off first, you back up between 0 and 1. Then you back up between 0 and 3. Then you back up between 0 and 7. So more and more time you try, the wider and wider you have to wait because there might be a lot more people trying it out. Okay. First, we assume only two people are trying. So we go between 0 and 1. And we both die random number between 0 and 1. You probably drive zero, I drive one, and we are both happy because you go right away. I have to wait for one slot. Right? But it is quite possible four people are trying. In this case, we both draw zero and one. Two people draw zero, two people draw one, and they, they all collide. And then in this time, they all have to draw between zero and three. So this is exponential back off, just like in Ethernet. Right? Every time you try, you try, you double the range. Double the range. Okay? And um, I think that is would be a good slide to, to stop. Okay? I will stop right there.